not your part to be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You may be seated now in the presence of the true and living God. First giving all praises God the Father and his Son, Jesus the Christ, and the welcoming of the Holy Spirit in this place to lead us and guide us in the right way. To our distinguished clergy in the house and to the Keys' daughters, Sister Dorothy and Laura, also the Sapinter and Hunter families. Willow Park, Christian Church Disciples of Christ family, and all you other brothers and sisters in Christ, friends and relatives that have come to show your love and support for this bereaved family. I say grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. So we're certainly glad that you have taken this time to come and help us to comfort and console the Keys family. And those of you that may not have had an opportunity to view Sister Keys, we would ask that you would come now because once everyone has had an opportunity to view her, the funeral director will be closing the casket and it will not be open at the end of this celebration of life. So if there's anyone else that would desire to come. You're welcome to come now.
again, we want to thank those of you that came to help us to console and comfort the Keys family, uh, Laura and, and Dorothy, as we celebrate a life, a precious life, a woman of God. And uh, she was an educator, not only in the public school system, but also with Christian education. And that requires a special calling. And so uh, this is a celebration of the Lord calling one of his own home. And so we're gonna proceed on, of course, with uh, these times uh, of uncertainty with the pandemic and, and all. Uh, we won't prolong, uh, we're gonna move things right along and to respect uh, you know, your safety, and we thank you for being humble and obedient and keeping your mask on when you're uh, within six feet of one another, and, and also in general, if you're not speaking, uh, we would ask that you please keep your mask on. And as far as uh, touching and hugging, uh, we know these, these kind of times we like to hug and, and embrace, but we would ask that you would refrain from hugging and kissing and that kind of thing. You can just acknowledge your love from afar, and we thank you for being obedient. At this time, we're now ready for the Old Testament reading, and we have Reverend Winfred Dotson, who is pastor at Lily of the Valley Baptist Church. And if you would come now and read it. Give us the Old Testament. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here at this time to be able to read a word for Sister Keys, the Keys Sabbath family. Which I love Sister Keys and Henry Keys and the whole family and the Sabbath family. You all are very special to me. I'm going to read to you from the Old Testament. I'm going to read Psalms the 31st number, starting at the 10th verse. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships she brings forth her food from afar. She rises also while it is night and giveth me to her household and a person to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands. She planted a vineyard. She gathered her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretches out her hands to the poor, yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry, her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. 
Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruits of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. May the Lord have a blessing on the hearing, reading, and doers of the word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dodson. Pastor Dodson is one of, was one of the close friends of uh, the Keys family, Dr. Henry Keys in particular. And uh, it's always wonderful when we can call on friends, acquaintances of, of long ago that remember the legacy of Dr. and Sister Keys. And we have another pastor here that uh, also was very close to Dr. Keys and Sister Keys. And that would be Pastor Robert Douglas of Revelation Christian Church. If you would come now, my brother, and share a New Testament reading with us. Thank the Lord for the uh, blessing of knowing the Keys family over so many years and watching the spiritual and uh, development and growth that God has rendered. I'm, I'm saddened that on this occasion I see the daughters again, but I praise God that there's a union in heaven. I want to read for your comfort and consideration out of the book of Romans, the Romans, the Romans the 8th chapter beginning with the 35th verse through the 39th verse. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sorrow? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Hmm. Through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor death, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. Let the people of God in the house say amen. Amen. We want to thank Pastor Douglas of Revelation Christian Church for sharing with us that New Testament reading. And now there's another one, another pastor, Pastor Dan Walker of Starlight Missionary Baptist Church. He, too, is a friend of the Keys family. You know, it's good to have friends like these pastors that are over there. Not everyone can just pick up the phone and say, Pastor, would you come and help us in our town need? And in this case, uh, they had a plethora or a multitude of pastors that they could have called on, and all of them would have come. But. Uh, at this time, we're just thankful for these that are here. And right now, Dr. Dan would ask for you to come now and provide us with the prayer of comfort. Please come now. Let us bow our heads. Gracious and eternal God, our Father which art in heaven, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Lord, we are so grateful for the opportunity, Lord, to whisper a prayer to you on behalf 
of this bereaved family, the Keys family, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the privilege, Lord, have, that, that you've given to me, oh Lord, personally, to be able to know uh, their mother and their father. And, oh God, to be able to work with them down through the years. Thank you, Lord, that I even knew their grandfather. Lord, I had opportunity to work with him. Master, we come now lifting up uh, these daughters, uh, this brother, oh God, and other members of the family, Lord, that you would have thine own way in their lives, Lord. Give them strength, give them wisdom and knowledge from on high, Lord, to let them know, God, that you are the same God. And Lord God, it was promised that this day would come. But Lord God, sometimes we don't want to see it. But Lord, in reality, it is a truth. You did promise to come back and receive your children unto you. Give comfort once again. Give peace, O oh Lord. Oh, Lord, give understanding. Lord, and we know, oh Lord, that everything will work out all right. It's in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Once again, Lord, we shall not forget, Lord, to pray for the man of God whom is about to give words of comfort. Give him strength, Lord, as pastor of these daughters, oh, Lord. We love you, sir. We thank you, and we give your name to praise in the powerful, strong, loving name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Walker, for lifting us up during this time before our Heavenly Father. And now there's another pastor that is seated over there on the front row, and that would be the one, Reverend Dr. Larry Garcia who is former pastor of uh, Hill Country Christian Church. And uh, Dr. Garcia, uh, we were in the same district that is uh, the Blue Bonnet Assembly of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. And uh, he uh, has been uh, very close to Willow Park and uh, the Keys family over down through the years. And uh, it's very appropriate that he would come now and give us words of comfort. Please receive him now, Pastor Larry Garcia. It is strange and interesting to me that I would be saying words of comfort about Richard Dean because she was comfort. <clears throat> Much like Jesus Christ brought to this world words, but more importantly, actions. And I never encountered Richard Dean that she did not make me feel warm and loved and comfortable. I think to those 31 years that she taught school. And can you imagine those rough, tough kids over in Edgewood encountering a person of love and faith. I remember her words. Take some more chicken. Have some more. She was about making people feel Good and comfortable. I remember the birthday party for Henry that she had after Henry may not have even known he was having a birthday. And I know that there were some people saying, oh, can you imagine that? She's, she's wasting money. She's having a birthday party for somebody who doesn't even know that it's their birthday. But she knew that she wanted to express 
in actions the love of God. I believe with all of my heart that Rich Dean is in heaven this very moment fixing dinner for those who will be coming. And I can hear her words as you and I go to meet and greet her in heaven. Here, take a little more chicken. You and I can learn a great deal from Richard Dean about not just talking about Jesus, but being Jesus. I don't know, and I, I, I imagine she didn't say very much about Jesus when she was teaching school, but she was Jesus to those kids. And that's the example that you and I need to receive from Richard Dean's life. I can tell you that I saw her so many times after Henry's mind left, but his body was still here. And, and that didn't make much difference to her. She loved him. I only hope that somebody shows me the same love and affection and care that she showed to Henry. She was Jesus Christ to Henry. She didn't care that he might have not been able to return that love and affection. She didn't care that he might have sometimes smelled a little bad or been somebody that we might not have wanted to be with her, but she didn't care. She knew how to love, just as Jesus Christ. She knew how to make folks feel comfortable at home. She is going to be there. And she's going to be one who welcomes each and every one of us to our home with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Garcia, for sharing with us those comforting <coughs> words. And uh, that really says a lot about Sister Richard Dean uh, abiding, allowing Jesus to abide in her. Uh, and it's better to see a sermon than to preach a sermon. And from what he just said, that's what she was about. You could just receive of her the love of Christ that resided in her heart. And right about now, we're ready for a song of praise. And we have a young lady over there in the corner that was named Rose. Rose Paquis. Rose uh, has been with Hope Park Christian Church for about a little over a year now. And 
She hails out of Kansas City. And uh, we heard about her. She was in California and moving to San Antonio. And the Lord led her to Willow Park by way of Brother Gary Givens, who's over there in the corner. And we'll hear a little bit from him a little bit later, too. But Sister Rose, are you ready? Ready. <laughs> Go ahead on them. Come on here and bless us. Sister Rose, and thank you, Brother Bass Player, Keith, Brother Keith the Braille. Now we're ready for our resolutions, and the first one will be a re resolution of respect from Willow Park Christian Church, presented to you by Sister Bernice Harvey. Come on here, Sister Harvey. Park Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, 118 Hunting Boulevard, San Antonio, Texas, 78220. Pastor J.B. Brown III, our pastor. Resolution in loving memory of Sister Richie Dean Sapping the Keys, November the 10th, 2020. We are here today to pay our tribute and our respect to a strong woman of God, our sweet sister, Sister Richard Dean Keys. Not only have people 
from this congregation and this community gathered, but many have come from all walks of life from across this nation who loves Sister Richie Dean as a sister and a friend. We are here today to show our love and support for Sister Key's family. Not only do we sense our own personal feelings of loss over Sister Key's passing, but our hearts have been drawn toward them and will continue to be with them. Finally, the Willow Park family are here today to seek and receive comfort. We would be lost, no, we would be less than honest we said that our hearts, that our hearts, <clears throat> hold on, my cataracts are messed up. <laughs> Finally, the Willow Park family is here today to seek and to receive comfort. We would be less than honest. We said if we said that our hearts did not ache over the passing. But we trust that God will minister our hearts and give us strength as we continue in our walk with him. To know Sister Richie Dean was to love her and to be inspired by her. The measure of a life is not in the duration but in the uh, donation. When we think of Sister Key's donation, we have worked to celebrate and to thank and to be thankful for her. As Proverbs 20, five through seven says, the purpose of a person's heart are deep waters but one who has insights draws them out. Many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find the right lead, blameless lives, blessed are their children after them. Whereas Sister Richie Dean accepted Christ as the way and arrived to be a faithful servant in everything she did. She loved Willow Park Christian Church and the members there. She began a four decade journey starting with Reverend Thomas Hatton Sr. Whereas over the span of four decades, Sister Richie Dean utilized her time, talent, and treasure to demonstrate her faithfulness and love of God. She first became the general secretary and a member of the choir and finance committee. She loved to draw and right. So she created and published the church bulletin every Sunday and special occasions. She come from a family of educators and was a devoted teacher for 31 years. So was the Sunday school superintendent Sunday school teacher, vacation Bible school coordinator, and a Christian Youth Fellowship men, uh, mentor. She believed in the equality of women and supported Disciples of Christ messages 
of Women Inclusion and Ministry. So was the Christian Women's Fellowship President. She was also the Christian Women's Fellowship President. Whereas Sister Keys was faithful, <coughs> was a faithful wife and her husband for 34 years and a pillow of strength for her children and extended family. Despite her own health challenges, she pushed herself to be supportive of her husband, Reverend Henry Keyes, Jr. Ministry. Cared for him in his illness and after his death. Continued her involvement and leadership of Willow Park Christian Church and commit different committees. Whereas Sister Keys, faithfulness continued even to her body and health, even as her body and health failed her. <coughs> her drive never faded and she never and she never lost her faith in God. Sister Richard Dean, we celebrate your talents. <coughs> we marveled at your we marveled at your humbleness. We thank you for your selfishness. We commend your strength, courage, and conviction. We hope, we hope to emulate your faithfulness. We are forever grateful but without fear and, and with deep conviction and exalting celebration. Resolved, thank you, Sister Keys. Forever yours in Christ, the family of Willow Park Christian Church. A copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy kept in the church box. Humbly submitted on this 10th day of November, 2020. The officers and members of Willow Park Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, San Antonio, Texas, Reverend J.B. Brown III, our pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Harley, for sharing that resolution of respect. And there's a lot of words there that are uh, very touching. Uh, a life well lived. You know, it, every marker uh, had a great uh, a date, a beginning date of birth and an ending date of death. But in between there's a dash and what she just read was some of that dash that God used her for to, as a servant. So again, thank you Sister Harley. And now we have another resolution uh, from Guadalupe Baptist Theological Seminary. And it is being presented by Sister Mary Walker. Receive her now. Thank you, Pastor. To God be the glory for the great and the wonderful things that he has done. And I believe that we can all attest to the fact that he is a God who does not do just some things, but he does all things well. Resolution of respect for Sister Residine Keys. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, 
I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. No matter what your trials are, or how big your mountains seem, the Lord is there to see you through. He'll go to all extremes. So if your cross seems hard to bear and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. We are placed in this world for a limited time, and with the breath of the infant begins the race to the grave, a race everyone must run. Whereas in the providence of God our Father, he has brought to the close of life for our dear sister, Richardine Keyes, the official board and staff of the Guadalupe Baptist Theological Seminary in San Antonio, Texas, feel it befitting to express our deepest sympathy to the family during the passing of your mother, sister, and other family members. We commend you to him who knows best and will always do right. You have our sincere prayers. Whereas Sister Richardine Keyes was a faithful Christian woman, mother, and devoted worker who loved the Lord a very independent person who would perform any task and instilled her family to follow her example. She loved her family with a gentle yet stern combination which she possessed. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by remembering this poem. When I must leave you for a little while, Please do not grieve and shed wild tears and hug your sorrow to through, through the years, but start out bravely with a gallant smile, and for my sake and in my name, live on doing all things the same. Feed not your loneliness on empty days, but fill each waking, waking hour in useful ways. Reach out your hand in comfort and in cheer and I, in turn, will comfort you and hold you near, and never will leave you, nor will I forsake you. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy kept in the seminary archives. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your sorrow. But most importantly, we recognize that the loss is heaven's gain. The board and staff of the Guadalupe Baptist Theological Seminary, San Antonio, Texas, humbly submitted on this 10th day of November, 2020. Dr. Wilma Cook, President, Dr. Dan Walker, Jr., Vice President. May God bless you. Amen. God bless you, Sister Walker, for stepping in to share with us resolution from Guadalupe Baptist Theological Seminary. And yes, uh, her husband, Laura and Dorothy's father, Reverend Dr. Henry Keyes, was a part of the staff and a professor <coughs> over there at uh, the school. And uh, I came along just a little bit after his departure. And uh, sometimes I'm, I assist with the uh, executive duties Quite a bit of uh, correspondence where uh, Dr. Keyes was very, ins ins very uh, helpful uh, with the school, and uh, we, we just uh, are grateful that he had the support of Sister Richard Dean and the family to be a professor and, and teacher there at the school. So we praise God. Thank you. And is there, are there any other organizations, auxiliaries uh, with uh, re re a resolution? Already, well, those two, uh, I think, uh, said a lot about our dear sister and how much uh, she donated to uh, this world. And 
to the church and her share in ministry as uh, a helpmate for Dr. Keys. And now we're ready for family reflections. Uh, Sister Jacqueline Miller will come now. Still morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Sister Dean was my cousin. And first off, can you hear me? I, I just got in town about an hour ago from Memphis. So I just wanted to try to keep this on as we can just to make sure everything's safe. So if you can't hear me, let me know. But uh, Richard Dean was my cousin. Aunt Dorothy was uh, my aunt. Our family, uh, on my mom's side, they were several sisters and, and brothers, and they were spread all over. In the back, my cousin Cynthia and her husband are here from D.C. She was my aunt Anna's daughter. We had an aunt um, that lived in California, one that lived in Minnesota. My parents were from Pennsylvania, and um, we had folks in Arkansas, so we were spread all over. They didn't get, get together much, but they did keep in touch. And for years, we would always talk, and I have my cousin Richardine. She was older, and she always was doing stuff that I admired. She would go this, she'd do that. She'd be in school, she went to college. There was always something that Richardine was doing that I said, when I get bigger, I want to do that. Then Richardine uh, met Henry, and she got married. Now, Richardine had two brothers, Lynn and Rex, but she didn't have any sisters. So for her wedding, one of the things she wanted to do was include her cousin. So we um, came down, and I was 20 at the time, so you can tell that was a while ago. But she wanted to include her cousins, and I was honored and excited because I had just turned 20 the day before I was gonna get on my first plane ride ever. And back in the day, being on the plane ride in the 70s was big, you know. You got dressed up and you got ready to go. Nowadays, when you get on the plane, you got to have your PPEs and sanitizers and handwares, so it's a lot different. <laughs> But right now, but at that time, I was excited. I was ready. I was coming down to finally meet my cousin. And I met her and my aunt and my other cousin, uh, that I, uh, Belda, that I had never seen, but I, I'd always heard about. And they greeted me with such joy and happiness. And it was just very interesting to see people that I had talked to so much that looked just like my mother. So that was kind of uh, interesting. But we had a fun time at the rehearsal dinner. I met everybody at the church and it was exciting. That night, we came home to the house and again, I had never been more than 120 miles away from home. Like they say, everything's bigger in Texas. That night, they had a thunderstorm. Now, when I grew up, you could always say, okay, thunder, then the lightning will tell you how far apart, 1,001, 1,002. Again, this storm was nothing like I had ever heard before. It was like it was on the riverfront and it was heading up on Dorothy's house because as soon as you heard the thunder, you, you heard the crash. So I couldn't sleep and I was scared. And I was roaming around the room but then Richardine peeked in the door. Turns out I wasn't the only one that was scared that night and couldn't sleep. Richardine was so excited and happy about being able to marry Henry the next day, she couldn't sleep. And we stayed up that entire night talking about all the different things she wanted to do and achieve in her life and the things that she thought were important. So that's how I first met my cousin. So through the years, we kept in touch. And anytime there was any event, the birth of both of her daughters, she was so excited when you both showed up. And we always talked about that. When I got married, she showed up and she brought you two. You had the cute little dresses that she showed up for the wedding. And my cousin Cynthia was there too. So even though we grew up far apart, we tried to stay in touch. She came back to Pennsylvania, came up to visit my mom, her Aunt Millie, and we, they went to Niagara Falls. I live in Houston, and there are several times that they came up for holidays, so we still tried to keep in touch with each other's lives. And then although she was very slight, and ever since I knew her, she, she always had some health issues over the years, Richard Dean was a very focused person, and Richard Dean had an iron will. If she said she would want to do something, she would do it. And that was one of the things I admired about her. 
Over the years, she had a number of health issues that would have stopped others in their tracks. But for her, every time she fought back and overcame. She was amazing. And despite the issues, no matter what, if she could be there to help you, she would do it. Just a personal example was years ago, my sister-in-law and my brother and my niece are back there also from Houston. They were down in Corpus and my sister-in-law fell gravely ill. And I came in from Memphis, but then the next thing I knew, we looked up, Richardine and her daughters were there to provide support while we were sitting there waiting to determine what was gonna happen with my sister-in-law. And then when the Lord took her home, Richardine and her daughters came for the funeral and was always there for support. From what I've heard this morning, I'm sure each of you have your own example of how Richardine was there for you no matter what was going on in your life. Richardine and Henry raised two wonderful daughters, Dorothy and Laura, and I know today is one of the hardest days that you've had in your life. You've had a few, but this is another one of the hardest ones. But I know like your mother, you two are strong. You have her iron will to make it through. I also want to commend you on the care you provided for her over the years. I know you'd probably say I was just doing what I was supposed to do as a daughter, but there are a number of parents here that can't say that, that have children that wouldn't do what they did for you. Richardine and I would talk a lot, and especially the times when you guys weren't there, and you guys would go do something, we'd, we'd call each other on the phone, and there were a number of times that she would say and tell me how thankful she was for you too, for the things that you did with your life and how you sacrificed them, maybe that you wanted to do in your own life to care for her since she had been sick for so long, but I just wanted to know she was so grateful for your love and care and would tell someone. So thank you for that. I also want to say to both of you to be there to support each other. You guys, your sisters, and I know, sometimes your sister will do stuff and you all will be on your last good nerve, but don't ever, despite anything, let anything come between you. Family is everything. And please know, it's not just you two. You have uncles, you have us, you've got cousins, you've got a host of family and friends that'll be there for you. And they're ready and help you anyway. All you need to do is let us know. So remember that, take care of each other. I know that you who've known Richard Dean more closely over the years may have more things that you could say and um, tell about Richard Dean. Um, and have more stories than I have, but I do know that she loved God, loved the Lord. Ever since I met her, that was the first thing that came out in, in, in her. She was thoughtful, she was caring, she had a loving spirit, and she'll be truly missed. And the last year I know was incredibly difficult for her, and she fought bravely through all the challenges until the Lord called her home. Now, my mom died a few years ago. Um, she had Alzheimer's, and there was a song that I had heard that um, as I was going through things with her, that kept running in, in the back of my mind, and I thought about it, to, and it started coming to the front of my mind. And I think it, it has a lyrics that says, I'm free, praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. My soul is rested. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. And I know that Richardine now, despite all the different issues that she's had over the years, I like to think that something like that was playing at the background when she got up there for Jesus to welcome her home. And she saw her beloved Henry, she saw her aunt, she saw her mother and father, she saw her uncles, and all her friends there to welcome her home and say thank you. So I will miss my cousin Richard Dean, but I want to let you guys know if there's anything that you need from any of your family. Like I said, we have cousin Cynthia, we have uh, my brother, and you know Uncle Robert is there for you. That we will always be there for you. Thank you. Amen. Well said, uh, Sister Miller. Grateful that you had a safe uh, flight here to 
be with us today and our prayers that all of you that have come from afar and those that have come from near that you would have a safe return to your homes. And you may recall just a few minutes ago I talked about the dash. On every grade marker there's a dash, a beginning, a birth date, and the date that the person uh, died. And so now, this is just a small portion of that dash for Sister Richard Dean Keyes. We'd ask now if you would read her obituary silently as you reflect upon her dash. What a beautiful life. Well done. Uh, this obituary uh, reading uh, just given us just a little taste of how God used her during her journey on this earth with us. I know somebody's probably already looking at their watch and they're saying, I sure hope this preacher don't be too long. And I'll try not to be too long because I'm the only one in here that's been able to take up, remove my mask from time to time and I respect the fact that you have been obedient in keeping your mask on during this celebration of life for our dear sister. So I will be obedient to the Holy Spirit and uh, get right after it. Well it is indeed an honor and a privilege that I was asked uh, by Dorothy and Laura to bring this message of hope today. So thank you, Sister Laura, and thank you, Sister Dorothy. Uh, you all have been such wonderful daughters and an inspiration to us all in the way that you have cared for your mother, even during the difficult times, but you never lost hope. You continued to be a blessing to your mom and you continued to support the ministry at Willow Park Christian Church. Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> Dear Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to proclaim your word before this assembly. Today, I would ask that you would decrease me so that you can use me to speak that which will go forward and renew your people for a closer walk with you. I pray for your strength, Lord, to deliver your message. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. It was said by uh, 
Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King that nothing in this world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. I believe Sister Keys chose to be a professional educator because she wanted to be used by God to help people to learn about him and how to live in this society because she valued uh, education and she wanted to make sure that she did her part to make this world a better place to live. And so there is a scripture that talks about the role of why teachers teach. And it has to do with uh, ignorance. Uh, we require an education. Uh, uh, we have to be taught in the way because when we first come on board on this earth, uh, we don't know nothing. And we have to rely on our parents, caretakers, and then our prof professors, uh, our educators, who Sister Keys allowed God to use her to be. So we have a passage of scripture that talks about ignorance when it comes to the subject of death. In Apostle Paul's letter to the church at Thessalonica, uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, Paul instructs us concerning death. Again, that's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'll be sharing with you from the New King James Version, verses 13 through 18. Paul put it this way. He said, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means pre precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with, the, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. And for a subject with regard to this passage, I believe Sister Richard Dean would say, be not ignorant. Be not ignorant. Well, we all are ignorant about some things. I don't know how to replace a roof on a house, but I do know how to prepare a Bible lesson or a sermon. We all have knowledge of some things, but what about spiritual ignorance? You see, our world and our country we live in is ignorant of God and his will for their life, except for the fact we have ministers, preachers, and teachers that God is using as the light of this world and also the salt of this world, salt of this earth. And Sister Richard Dean, that's how God used her in her capacity as 
a teacher. And I believe if Sister Keys uh, was able to give you a quiz today about some basic knowledge of the Bible, which all of you should know. Uh, here's a couple of test questions she might would ask. Who was caught in the belly of a fish for three days? Yes, it was Jonah. She might also test you on who did Jesus speak to on the road to Damascus? Who? Yes, at that time his name was Saul. But one thing about it, once you meet Jesus, you'll never be the same. And Apostle Paul, actually he was Saul then, and speaking of uh, sincere ignorance, and conscientious stupidity, when he was Saul, he was sincerely ignorant. As a matter of fact, on his way to Damascus, he was going to persecute some Christians because he did not believe that Jesus is the son of the living God. He didn't believe that Jesus is our Messiah. But when he met Jesus on that road to Damascus, everything changed. He no longer was sincerely, sincerely ignorant because he was with Jesus himself. And as a matter of fact, he went on to write a large portion, maybe half or more, of the New Testament concerning Jesus the Christ. And so we have uh, here this passage of scripture from Apostle Paul to the church at Thessalonica. And he tells them about the subject of not to be ignorant when it comes to the loss of a loved one when they die in the Lord. And we do know that Sister Richard D. did die in the Lord. And the Bible says to be absent from the body is to what? To be present with the Lord. So she would want you to know, don't be ignorant about the this deceased. And Paul, he said, uh, you are to not be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men. You see, folks that just constantly grieve is because they don't understand the blessed hope of being with our Heavenly Father, spending eternity with Him. And see, uh, you know, while we're here, uh, we, we've got this dash that is between that birth date and the date that we die. But we ought to know that uh, it's not over when our earthly bodies die. We have a soul, and our soul will live again. And then, I believe Sister Richard Dean, she would tell you, don't be ignorant about the resurrection. You see, Paul tells us we believe that Jesus died and he rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. So she would want you to know that because of the power of the resurrection that Jesus he has that same resurrection power for the saints of God. And we know that Sister Richard Dean is a saint of God. And I would hope that all of you are saints of God. And somebody may be thinking, that, no, I'm not perfect. No, I haven't done everything I should do. There are some things I've left undone. And on my way here today, I committed a sin and I, I, I was speeding or I cut somebody off. But Sister Richard Dean don't want you to be ignorant about that. She would 
let you know that it is by grace that we are saved. It is by grace that we as believers are saints of God. And then the third point I'll talk about, Sister Richard Dean, she would say to you, don't be ignorant about the return of Christ. You see, Christ is coming back. And of course, uh, uh, with this uh, sincere ignorance, conscientious stupidity, we've seen it play out in full force, in particular over these last four years under the current administration in the White House. There are folks that are sincerely in what they're doing, but they are sincerely ignorant when it comes to the things of God. You see, you don't walk across the street and stand in front of a church and hold up a Bible upside down and think that that is deserving of being reelected. And so, not only do we have, we've seen pictures of sincere ignorance, we've also seen evidence of conscientious stupidity. Conscientious stupidity means that you know it's wrong and you do it anyway. You do it anyway. You know it's wrong. Babies taken from their mothers because the color of their skin is brown. Over 500 now not knowing where their parents are. I'm talking about conscientious stupidity. Sister Keys would want you to know that we need to be the salt of the earth and the light of this world. And so we know that Jesus, he is the light of the world. You see, God, she wants you to know that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son and that whosoever believe shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus, she wants you to know that he came to save the world from the wages of sin and he was hung on an old rugged cross, and he was buried in a borrowed tomb. And he stayed there, the same as that first test question I asked you about. Who stayed in the belly of the well? Jonah. Jesus, he told him, the same as the sign of Jonah in the belly of the well, I will live again. And so Jesus stayed there in the tomb for three days. But the Bible says early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, he got up with resurrection power, with all power in his hand. He looked at death and said, oh, death, where is your sting? So Sister Keys would want you to be Learned it, as the old folks would say. She would want you to know about her Jesus and our Jesus and how we are to be his chosen servants. And she certainly set the examples for us all, and particularly for her daughters, Laura and Dorothy, she and your father. They set the example before you. And that's why you were able to sustain and continue to be a support to your mom. So you can lift your head up high knowing that you did everything possible to ensure 
that she was well taken care of and comforted to the very end. So, in closing, again, be not, she would want you to be not ignorant of the Lord's coming. It could happen at any time. He can call your name. And we would hope that you would get the same answer as what she has received. And that answer is, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Brother Gary Gibbons, my friend, actually uh, most of the time I refer to him as minister of music, one who has been here in San Antonio and helping churches all over the city. And today we are excited that he took time to come and be a blessing with us on this day. Come on here and bless us, Minister Gibbons. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise, for it was grace that brought my liberty I do not know why Jesus he came to love me so he would be all All my faults and song my knees I shall forever live my life to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus he died just for me hallelujah how my the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond, yes he did, all of my faults, thank you God, and saw my knee, I shall forever live my life to Calvary to view the cross. Where Jesus, where Jesus, 
the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked, he looked, he looked, he looked, he looked, he looked. He looked. He looked. He looked. He looked. Again, we want to thank for you that came to share with us on this celebration for our dear sister. And um, we'd ask that you follow the directions. <laughs> 